I've reached my third survey of early landscape photographs and mainly I'm still in E1 territory with occasional excursions into the E500 and the 400. What is surprising and maybe not surprising at all is that early digital camera images from Olympus were of excellent photographic quality, good enough for front cover reproduction. And not only front cover, but the back cover too from the same single, no, there's not two images here, this is from a single image. The image is of York Minster. It was taken with the E20 camera, the immediate forerunner to the E1. So let's get on with the picture selection now. I hover between commercial and artistic photography. This chocolate box image of Mom's Mead is definitely commercial, but does it still have an artistic leaning? What makes it a little more creative is what you can't see. People, this is a honeypot, and it requires quite a bit of patience and skill to photograph it without people, but that doesn't last for long. This is why I keep my camera on program. I switch to aperture or shutter priority according to subject. Program is not auto. You can still add personal settings like white balance and exposure bias. I don't do everything by the book, you know, but that doesn't stop me from getting the shot. My inspiration is born out of spontaneity. Now, here I use aperture priority, f11, hyperfocal distance and the wide angle end of the zoom to make sure that the image is sharp from front to back. Despite spot metering and minus 0.7 EV, those clouds are close to overexposure. Sensors have greatly improved since the E500, but you will probably still need Lightroom or Photoshop to help you out. The SP310 is an inexpensive bridge camera that levels things down. When I ran photographic holidays, it was a mistake to go swanking around with a super-duper digital camera. This encourages the obvious comment from beginners and gives the wrong impression about photography. Working with the SP310 brings you not only down to size, but makes you see a picture without relying on technology, which isn't always the answer. Landscape photography, like many subjects, requires skills outside photography such as being a good walker and map reading. You still need to know how to work a camera, but even landscapes have their own choreography. It is called light. Here it is clarity and the view would simply not work without it. A bit of morning mist would be nice, but I was too late for that. But I love the tree patterns around the hillside. As with Mom's Mead, the secret of success here is the absence of people. Not easy at lower slaughter. There are many views of this village, but I love the sweep of the river leading the eye into the picture, helped, of course, by that reflection. I am not an action photographer, but I do admire those who produce such spectacular images. Nevertheless, I accepted the challenge, and out of many shots, this was the only decent one. It was bad enough dealing with a tricky exposure, not to mention the sun, but I have got that right. I have been back on many occasions to West Ichinor, but have never seen the chains laid out again like this. Just as well I got the technique right. Aperture priority, f11, hyperfocal distance and a wide angle optic, yes, that's all in place, and it is sharp where it should be. 
This shot only works because of weather. A sunlit foreground contrasting with a dark, threatening sky. The layout of the landscape works well in relationship to the tree. I am on program. Had to work quickly, but it didn't last long. Pity the sheep wasn't facing now. I wonder if I can turn it around in Photoshop. Do you think I can? Malham is a fantastic place for photography, and I have taken many people here. This is the cove, so I have climbed those 400-plus steps to the limestone pavement. Because of this, I don't lug around loads of gear that I probably won't use, but I do have a teleconverter, much lighter for slipping into your pocket until required. Winter is the best time to visit Malham Cove. It has less people. Furthermore, because of low light, the medieval field patterns come to life. This is a landscape to treasure, but it looks best out of season. Now this shot, taken with the E500, was reproduced in a WH Smith calendar a few years ago, and they are quite fussy about quality. It's the two bikes, isn't it? The cyclists are hidden behind the tree, but I did have to remove a shoulder in Photoshop. Apart from the bikes, the picture doesn't really have much going for it. But Richmond Park is a wonderful place for photography, and there are many other opportunities, but choose low light for a bit of drama. We've come to the end of the picture selection. And, you know, looking back over ten years, I do wonder if today my work has lost something. This could be a mistake on my part because the artistic muse still drives my ambitions today. And whilst one might quite naturally hunker for the past, what is more important that I can still produce something decent for the future, whatever that might hold.